What's going on guys? This is Chris with Azrael's Pit Barbecue and in this video we are going to talk about home sausage making. Actually, we're going to talk about having a grinder as a tool in your kitchen and we're going to make some sausage with it. In this video we're specifically going to make a breakfast sausage but as you have seen in other videos of ours we use the grinder for lots of stuff. You saw it in the APB burger video. You saw it in the chili making video. We've also used it to make andouille, which we then smoke on the pit. We use that for red beans and rice and other things like that. We've used it for making Italian sausage and we make our own meat sauce from scratch. Very good. We've even made frankfurters. That's right, for real German style hot dogs. There's lots of stuff you can do just by learning the basics and just getting started. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Why make sausage at home, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you, there's actually a few reasons. For one thing, it's fun. Just like when we make the APB burgers, and I said, it's fun, it's fun, and you can get the whole family involved. Two, lots of creativity and freedom in the kitchen here. You can basically make anything you want that falls into the sausage category. And let me tell you, the list is pretty long. And as far as freedom goes, you're choosing what is going in to that product, what meat and what seasonings, as opposed to what the bigger companies are doing, which actually makes your product healthier for you. I know that's a weird thing to say when you're talking about sausage. Sausage isn't exactly considered to be a health food item, but you're going to put in exactly what you need. The big companies, and we checked four different brands on this for breakfast sausage, they're putting in stuff like MSG flavor enhancers, natural flavors. They're using fillers in some of them, which could be problems for you folks that are gluten sensitive. And other things like corn syrup instead of sugar for the sweetness. So you're going to have what you're going to have, and they're going to have what they're going to have, and yours will always be better. Not to mention whatever scraps and bits that may go in that big commercial grinder that you would never put into your sausage. So in order to make sausage at home, you're going to need a few things and there's a little bit of an investment. The biggest investment is going to be your time, but you are going to have to buy a few things. For starters, you're going to need to buy a book such as this. This is Home Sausage Making and third edition. This is the book that got me started. It's a fantastic book. There are certainly others out there, but you can start with this one. I'll put a link to it in the description below so you can go take a look at it at Amazon. Another thing you're going to need is a grinder. Now before you go out and buy a grinder, check with family and friends to see if anybody has a grinder they're not using. Grinders used to be a pretty common thing in the home, so grandparents may have some, some old aunts and uncles may have some laying around. Just make sure they're not all rusty. But if you do have to buy one, don't fret because it's not terrible, terrible in terms of your investment, depending on what you get and what you want to do. The most basic is your clamp style grinder and you can get these for usually about 40 or 50 bucks and they'll last forever. The other type is a bolt style and the bolt down, eh, that's more of a permanent installation type thing, not something you're probably going to use in your kitchen. And the third type is an electric like what we use. You've seen it in a couple of our videos and you'll see it later in this one today. So while we're talking about grinders, really quickly, let's take a look at the anatomy of the grinder and you can understand how simple of a machine it really is. In this graphic here, you are seeing the basic parts of a standard clamp style, what grandma used to have, grinder. It has a handle, which are hand cranking. It's got the hopper where your meat goes in, the auger, which is a worm screw that pushes the meat forward. There's a little cross knife in there that cuts the meat as it comes through. There's a grinding plate and the locking ring. The grinding plate is fairly important and you'll get a couple of these at least with a basic grinder and you can get other sizes making sure they fit your type of grinder. But that gives you more of your coarser or finer grinds. Kind of like extruding Play-Doh when you were a kid. Another thing you need to consider is what kind of sausage you were making and what you're going to do with it. For example, breakfast sausage like we're making today, there's several choices of how you handle that sausage once you've done with the grind. Other sausages, like Italian sausage, same thing. Are you going to put it in a casing? Do you want links? Or are you just going to brown it and put it into a meat sauce? And then you get into things like summer sausages and the frankfurters and that kind of thing, which definitely need casings. We're not going to go in depth in casings in this video. Whatever sausage book you get, especially the home sausage making book that I suggested, will go into detail on that. For this 
particular sausage making video, we're going to use sleeves. And I'll show you, these are sleeves we actually make here at home. It's made of a muslin cloth, and we'll put about a pound of sausage each. We'll clamp them off with a ring. Believe it or not, the instructions for how to make these are in that home sausage making book. Lastly, the things you're going to need to make sausage are probably things you already have. A cutting board, some, a good knife for cutting meat, and some mixing bowls. Now, I'm going to recommend steel mixing bowls, and you're probably going to need a good size one. So if you don't have one, you can go get that at some place like Target or Bed Bath & Beyond or whatnot. I would also recommend that if it's something you're really going to have for a while, get a stainless steel one as opposed to an aluminum one. Other than that, we're ready to make some sausage, so let's now start talking about our meat product, and our actual seasonings. All right, guys, so let's get started on making a basic country-style sausage. You know, I'm from the South, and we love our sausage, and we love our bacon. So we are experts at this. So everything I tell you is absolutely true, and you should totally trust me. But in all seriousness, there are some decisions you need to make up front. And that is, quite frankly, how much are you going to make? because that's going to determine how much meat you need to get, and that's going to determine what you need seasonings wise. So that's simple. The next thing is, what are you going to do with that sausage once it's done? Are you going to make hand patties and cook it up, or make hand patties, put it in the refrigerator, cook it up the next morning? Are you going to maybe roll it out? You could actually roll your sausage meat out into a sheet, use a biscuit or a dough type cutter, and just cut out. You can do links. Do you want to do those small little cute sausage legs? Do you want to do the European style sausage legs? If you're going to do that, refer to your book because we're not going to talk about casings here. It's just a little bit more involved. It will tell you what types to get, what sizes to get, and how to prepare your casings and then how to actually stuff those casings. Or are you going to make a sleeve like we are? You can use sleeves like we have made, the muslin natural style that we've sewn up. You can even buy pre-made sleeves that hold about a pound a piece. Whichever way you prefer, just make sure you have those materials on hand so when you're ready to go, you've got what you need to do the stuffing. Okay, now that you've decided how much you're going to make and you've decided how you're going to serve it up, be it a patty or a link or a sleeve that you're going to cut up and cook just like you bought it from the store, now you got to go get your product in order to make your sausage. And the first is the meat, which is straight up 100% pork. In this case, a Boston or a pork butt. No, that's not the hind end of the piggy. That's actually from the shoulder, and it'll be labeled either pork or Boston butt. I'd recommend you get a, bon a boneless. Uh, that's just easier for you to work with and actually less weight than you're paying for. Depending on the pricing, sometimes a boneless will cost a little bit more than a bone-in. So if you want to do the extra work, then go ahead and do the extra work. The next is the seasonings, and the seasonings are pretty straightforward. You're essentially going to need some sage, salt, pepper, sugars, uh, crushed red pepper, some thyme, and summer savory. Now the last one might be a little bit tricky depending on where you live. We have found it in two different ways. In packages like this, where we've actually found this at the Fresh Market. We did not find this at the Whole Foods stores, but the Fresh Market, which is a Whole Foods type store, has it. And recently we found it actually in from Spice Island's Summer Savory. Really, really want to have this. As a matter of fact, I'd say the two most key ingredients to your breakfast sausage is going to be sage and summer savory. A quick note about your seasonings. Sausage is really subjective to me in terms of taste. What you might think is a really good sausage, I might find to be a weak sausage and vice versa. So you're going to have to play around with this a little bit and have a little bit of trial and error to dial it in. But that's the beauty of making your own sausage. You have that freedom. Now the book, Home Sausage Making, has X amount of quantity for these ingredients for three pounds of meat product in terms of your pork and your pork fat. We found that to be extremely weak. So after some trial and error of our own, we discovered that we absolutely love, and everybody who has had our sausage loves, we use the amount the book calls for for three pounds, we use that amount per pound. So we are basically, every pound that we make of that recipe, we are using a whole amount of what the seasoning calls for. So for this one, we're making 15 pounds, and this is our seasonings. 
All right, guys, you've made the decision on how much you're going to make. You've made the decision on how you're going to finish it off. You bought your pork, you've got your seasonings, and you're ready to go. So now you need to get your grinder out, you get your cutting board out, get your knives out, and get your mixing bowls out for your seasoning and for your meat. Lastly, you may want to use some gloves. That's optional. And a helper is always helpful. So, okay, at this point, you should have a whole boneless pork butt or Boston butt in front of you on a cutting board and you're going to need to trim this out. So the butt should have a good size or a nice fat cap on it. You're just going to cut that fat cap straight off and set that fat aside because you're going to use it later. You're going to go through and cut your meat up into strips or chunks, uh, cubes, however you want to do it. Just make sure that they're not too big they fit into your grinder without you having to really jam it in there as you go. Especially if you've got a hand crank grinder because that's just going to make more work for you. As you're trimming this out, you're going to run into silver skin, various connective tissues, slimy stuff. Trim all of that out and discard it because that's going to be waste. Let's talk about that fat for a second. You can't talk about sausage without talking about fat. Too much fat, then you're going to have sausage that's going to want to shrink up it's going to be greasy, soggy, and you're going to have a lot of oil in your pan. Too little fat, you're going to have sausage that's going to be dry and crumbly. Now, the home sausage making book calls for a half a pound of fat, that's your fat fat, against a two and a half pounds of lean. Um, that's probably a good ratio to start with. We're kind of just eyeballing it now because we've done this quite a bit. In our case, our meat's all ready to go because we got about 15 pounds to grind through and that's what we're going to do right now so let's get started okay guys you got your meat all cut up we're ready to go we have 15 pounds of fresh pork butt in our bin you're using a bowl i'm going to use this big old bin simply because that's a lot of meat to process i'm also using my limb lem electric grinder this is what's called a number eight and it has a foot switch on the floor so i can keep my hands up here and not have to touch buttons over there so let's get to grinding. pounds of fresh ground pork okay now that we got our pork all ground up we're going to do our seasoning now here's something that's not in the book that I do you don't necessarily have to do this I do this I find that it helps get my seasoning distributed a little more evenly and that is I mix my seasoning with water one ounce per pound so let me get this mixed up real quick basically making a bit of a slurry here. And this is one place where having a helping hand comes in handy. Because I'm going to have my hands deep off into this ground pork here. Miss Amy is going to pour it in for me. So just give me a nice trickle across the top there. Alright. I'm going to mix it up.
Okay. So this feels like it's mixing pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now, one thing you might do that I do is I know what my sausage should smell like. So I will take a nice whiff mm, and see if it smells like sausage should smell like. That smells like what I think sausage should smell like. You want to look, make sure you're seeing seasoning all throughout. You should see, see the specks of the sage, the little seeds of the pepper. Mm. And another thing I'm going to do before I go through the trouble of bagging all this up is I'm going to make a quick little test bit that we're going to cook up and we're going to try it. Make sure it's right. And here's the thing. At this point, you can't take away anything. You got what you got. But if it needs a little more sage, needs a little more salt or something like that, now's the time to make a gentle adjustment. If you cook up a test piece and it's not quite right, then I would recommend at that point you add, you know, whatever it is you feel like you need to add, you add a little bit, mix it up, and make another test piece. Don't go crazy, because again, you can add, but you can't take away. Mmm. Man, there is nothing like the smell of sausage cooking, and it's even better when it's fresh. Look at that just made it you guys saw us make it and i can already tell you i know this is spot on i already know but we'll try it anyways because that's what you do mm. Mm -hmm. oh excuse me mm so good. I hope y'all's experience is as good as ours. There is nothing better than making up some fresh sausage and getting that first bite. Mm, so good. Now, if you're not quite ready, if you got too much of something in there, sorry, it's okay. You can always start over and try again. And I definitely recommend you do small batches until you get your flavor profile just right and then start scaling it up. If it is just right, now you're going to go into your second grind. If you're going to do patties or you're going to roll it out and cut out, you know, your little uh, sausage patties that way, then second grind right into your bowl and then you can do whatever you're going to do with your meat from there just like you would be handling like a hamburger meat or something. If you're stuffing into casings or in our case a sleeve, then you're going to do a second grind. And if you're doing casings, I wouldn't do this, but because we're going into a big sleeve like this, we are actually going to do a second grind and stuff at the same time. So we still have our cutting plate in the grinder and then we have this very large stuffing tube because we have a very large sleeve which will go on like that. Now you're going to have to prime your stuffing tube if you're stuffing. This particular stuffing tube actually holds nearly a pound of ground meat. So we're actually have to put about a pound in here. Remember we did 15 pounds? We're going to need, we're going to burn a pound in here but when we're all done we will actually push that pound of meat that's sitting in this tube into the last sleeve. So without further ado, we're going to crank one of these out for you and call it a day. Right at the end? Right at the end.
one pound of fresh sausage. All right, guys, that just about wraps it up. We got 14 more of these to make and we'll be done. And I really hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a lot. In the description section below, I will put links to the book. I'll put links to some of these limb products that we've talked about. I'm not endorsed by these guys. I'm not getting paid for these guys or anything. This is just what we're using and it'll give you a good starting point. All that's left to do now is to clean up. And remember, that sausage is going to meld those flavors a little bit over time. So tomorrow morning, this is going to be oh so good. This is Chris from Azrael's Pit Barbecue, and keep that smoke rolling. We'll see you next time.